Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's Forex and Gold Fundamental and Technical Supply and Demand Analysis. Um, if you like the videos that I provide every week and um, think that it's useful, uh, don't forget to like, subscribe and share uh, with your fellow trading colleagues as it is a great way to uh, support the channel, a free way to support the channel. So let's get into the uh, the week ahead and um, week ahead it will be a busy week in the US with Fair Chair, um, Fed Chair Jerome Powell's speech at Jackson Hole Symposium, uh, which takes place once a year, taking central stage, following um, followed by several data releases, including personal income spending, durable goods, uh, orders, new home sales, and the second quarter GDP estimates. Right, that's going to be very important. Um, uh, also, flash PMIs for August will be published for the US uh, you and the UK and Australia, Germany and France and Japan. So finally, investors will closely follow the monetary policy meetings in China, South Korea and Indonesia. So, um, Lots going on this week, um, and the devil is in the details, which you can have a read if again if you go to tradingeconomics.com and click on the week ahead uh, tab. But let's get into uh, some of the charts and uh, a bit more fundamentals as to what's happened over the, um, the past week. And starting off on the dollar index, and the dollar index is just a measure of dollar strength against um, various currencies like the pound, the yen, and the euro. And um, we use the dollar. Um, index as um, as just a confluence, not necessarily trading this confluence. Um, but one of the things that you really want to do is understand, if you're new, by the way, uh, to this channel, is understanding really the fundamental analysis, because fundamental analysis um, is really determining uh, uh, current and uh, future value. And um, I've been pretty much um, saying that I'm long on dollars. I was saying that I was long on dollars even as we were coming down here. That's not to say that, you know, we're going to predict the, the exact turning points at all times, but um, the money is made generally, typically, you know, to the upside. And the money's been made to the upside. And just basically, just looking for pullbacks to get long. And so uh, a couple of weeks ago, this is basically what we had, even in the face of, um, you know, uh, uh, I guess uh, traders thinking that there was going to be, um, I guess, a, a bit of a, a deeper pullback and a and a, and a recession. Anyways, um, prices were obviously seen as a bargain at this uh, at the one hundred fives, and uh, prices have gone through. And if uh, and if the fundamentals basically say that <clears throat> this is undervalued. There's no supply zone in the world that is going to stand, you know, technical analysis level that's going to stand in the way of, you know, fundamentals or risk sentiment. So, um, as we've made um, higher highs and higher lows, right here and here, uh, you know, the dollar is obviously seen uh, as bargain prices around here, and. Um, but I think we are coming to a bit of a top, potentially. I'm not saying that we're going to reverse here, but we are coming to a bit of a high. This was seen as an expensive area back in July, mid-July on dollar. Uh, that's that's you know proven because prices didn't go higher than that, right? So that was definitely seen as expensive, and this is now seen as a bargain price, and we're heading back into really an expensive territory. Now, um, uh, bond traders, Bond traders' is go to bet for 2022 is on the line at Jackson Hole. So deeply inverted treasury yield curve is a harder trade now. And uh, traders paired uh, bets on Fed rate cuts in 2023 last week, in, in, sorry, in the past week. So it's really important to keep an eye on what the bond traders are doing. You know, Forex and um, government bonds, treasury yields are, um, are very uh, highly uh, linked. And in fact, um, you know, bond traders are uh, really uh, some of the smartest guys, um, you know, traders on the planet. They, they have to have the foresight um, to really kind of predict um, and forecast what uh, the economy is going to do and what the, uh, what inflation is going to do and uh, as well as uh, interest rates and what the Federal Reserve is going to do because that really has an effect on uh, bond yields and uh, not to necessarily get into it right now but just understand um, there is a yield curve and let me just get a pen tool and try, to, I'll try and break this down as quickly as I can but there's a yield curve right and um, you have um, this is this is time right and this is the uh, the yield Right, so this is in percentage terms. Now, um, with with government 
bonds um, investors uh, expect a um, a return right for holding government debt so um, what in, in in a healthy economy what you sh what should happen is the yield curve should look like this and if this is two years this is maybe five years this is ten years yeah you should receive a higher yield for holding um, uh, treasury bonds and government debt for for longer right and um, it's because well you know you're taking on more risk if you think about it if you're holding a you know treasury yield for 10 years yeah versus two years you should be compensated more right for holding um, those treasury years yields for 10 years rather than two years right and it's the same thing for example with six months if I hold you know treasury yields for six months or over two years that should be really you know lower than than two years right so um, so you get compensated for the amount of uh, time that you're holding those yields now if you have a flattening yield curve or an inverted yield curve uh, that is typically not good um, um, when it in terms of um, uh, where bond traders think the economy um, is going to potentially go and what the Fed are potentially doing with interest rates, right? I'm not going to get into it in this video, but um, something that I, uh, I showed uh, the, the mentees in the um, in our in the Discord group. But um, uh, it's really important as forex traders to watch what is happening with the yield curve, as that will uh, tend to um, um, predict or forecast. Uh, what uh, potentially is happening with the economy, interest rates and the inflation. So, um, again, uh, wages on a flattening yield curve has been uh, have been a winner for most of the past year with rates on longer dated securities moving lower, right? So longer dated securities meaning the 10 year, you know, 20 year moving lower relative to short term benchmarks, which is like the two year. Yeah. So as I said, you know, if 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 the uh, 10 year is moving down and you know towards the uh, where you're getting the same yield as a two is the two year um that's really a flattening yield curve and it doesn't you know bode well for um you know for the economy anyways uh, and in many cases even quite deeply below um those moves came as traders anticipated a capitalization uh, on the fed sequence of increasingly big rate increases that are aimed at tackling persistent high inflation the two-year treasury yield ended this week around 3.6 percent right about 28 basis points higher than the 10 year so basically if you're plotting out on the graph the two-year is actually higher than the 10 year which is slightly um inverting yeah um now what uh i want to read is this pretty much his pal uh, will want to err on the side on on the hawkish side stressed um, uh, stressing that restoring price stability is the top priority said Tim Magnuson uh, chief investment officer at Garda Capital Partners a hedge fund the flatter will be in play sorry the flattener will be in play until the Fed stops tightening however it is a harder trade now having already moved so much so again just important to really understand the yield curve and watch the yield curve and um, that really does have an effect on um on currencies in which way you want to trade now um the fed is also um um prioritizing um hike rate hikes over the economy and so they see inflation as a bigger threat than um uh than than a recession right in terms of um in terms of uh, sorry rate hikes uh, over inflation uh, is the is the is the uh, lesser of two evils so they'd rather um, prioritize having uh, higher interest rates to combat inflation and then deal with a potential recession afterwards rather than letting inflation get out of control so feds barking says central banks will do what it takes to curb inflation um, which is basically hawkish right so you can um, you know the likelihood of the fed still being hawkish and still trying to appreciate the dollar um, is probably the, the path of uh, least resistance so that's what where, where you, you know you're pretty likely to see um, uh, the uh, 
bank try to influence uh, the dollar, right? So the Federal Reserve Bank of Richmond President Thomas Barkin said the central bank was resolved to curb red hot inflation, even if that meant risking a US uh, economic recession. We're committed to returning inflation to our 2% target and we'll do whatever it takes to get there, Barkin said Friday during an event in Ocean City, Maryland. Uh, he said that this would be achieved without tremendous decline in activity, but acknowledged there were risks. Anyway, so getting back to you know, the dollar and pretty much um, what does that mean for the dollar? For me, um, it's still I'm still looking to go long on the dollar. Now, um, as we get into expensive areas, I'm not too keen on buying the dollar around, you know, highs. Personally, I want to wait for pullbacks uh, to look to um, buy the dollar. So um, these areas here, if prices can pull back, that would be um, brilliant as a confluence. So for me, my bias is still to the long side. Do I know what's gonna happen this exact week? No, in the short term, nobody knows, right? But regardless, it's, it's really about understanding value over the medium to long term and looking for buying opportunities and looking for you know bargain prices. So dollars in a bit of an expensive area i think the um the uh, the federal reserve 75 basis point uh, rate hike is being priced in um so it's basically a buy the rumor uh, right the rumor was being bought all the way down here with the smart money while everyone else was going short on the dollar um smart money was looking to buy uh, and this is basically what we were looking to do as well and uh, many of the traders in the group and the private members group ended up buying the dollar um, around this um, this area here and making some uh, decent profits so um but right now potentially we could be obviously coming to a high and expensive area so um again my bias is still to the long side but maybe wait for bit of pullbacks on the dollar uh, looking at the dollar yen and the dollar yen um, pretty much again is a reflection of you know dollar index going um, higher again this was a very nice uh, buy trade um, uh, a pullback in the last uh, week or two and uh, yeah look at pretty much what happened there you know, because if you think about where we are in terms of um, monetary policy in the Japanese yen, um, the Bank of Japan is still not uh, looking to hike rates and uh, the, the Federal Reserve are, right? The, the Bank of Japan are basically holding rates still at, um, at, at I think it's minus 0 0.1. So um, again, where are you going? If you're looking for um, yield and, and a return on your investment you're not going to put it into uh, the Japanese yen are you in fact that will cost you money so um, you know the, the dollar was definitely seen as a bargain down here and I was saying this if you check out the videos over the last uh, couple of weeks and go back to these these dates you'll hear me say I'm a buyer of the dollar my bias and this is basically what has happened so deleting uh, that supply zone and uh, moving maybe this demand zone up a little bit more and uh, we are where we are now again if you do want to look for short trades on the dollar um, and buy the yen and you think that the yen is a bargain around here uh, let's say for example some sort of you know risk event comes into play then that's a decent trade um, a technical trade I do like it technically but just you know from a fundamental perspective I'm not really keen on buying a yen until uh, the Bank of Japan uh, really kind of switched their policy uh, their monetary policy I'll probably look for pullbacks into that 133 area before looking at a buy or even better still if prices can come down to this 131 that's another buy right there um, and again this area here the 138s 139s I think are um, decent sells it depends on obviously um uh, which way you do want to you do want to buy if you think that the, the dollar is expensive here and and the japanese yen is a bargain up here which it was here right um it was seen as a bargain here or the dollar was seen as expensive then that could be a decent trade but for me the path of least resistance is still to the upside um dollar cad um dollar cad not really a pair that i'm interested in trading but um as both central banks are hiking rates, but the dollar is seen as the uh, is now seen as a stronger of the two um, for several reasons, and also one being um, you know oil basically uh, selling off a little bit, um, which is the reason why you're seeing um, the dollar strengthen, and the dollar tends to strengthen in more of a risk off scenario anyway. Now you are back up into a nice uh, supply zone, a technical level, not the best level in the world to be fair. It's decent 
it's got that kind of hard out movement but um, you really want it to be fresh a fresh area of supply and this isn't necessarily the freshest area of supply when you look to the left to you know to see basically what's happened there so that would have been the fresh area as prices came back and now that level's been touched so if you do want to get short it's not necessarily an a1 setup um, if you think that sorry I'm, I'm talking about buying the um the Canadian dollar sorry Swiss franc uh, dollar Swiss um, so that kind of puts um, different spin on it, obviously. But with the um, with the uh, with the Swiss franc, fundamentally, um, actually, no, it doesn't really because the Swiss franc, the Swiss National Bank is still hiking rates. The um, the dollar is still hiking rates. So again, it's not really a pair that I'm interested in uh, too much. But um, but yeah, technically, it's still the same. I personally would rather, if I was looking for short trades uh, around that 97 area. Um, or if I was looking to buy the dollar against the uh, Swiss franc, then this I think is a is actually a decent area to look for uh, some long trades. But um, but yeah, I think the Swiss franc uh, is a buy. Um, I'm actually a buyer of the Swiss franc, but just not against the um, the, um, the the US dollar. And um, uh, the dollar CAD. So the dollar CAD similar again as I was explaining in last. Um, uh, uh, chart I think in that it was the uh, dollar CAD this is the dollar CAD and again similar thing where you had oil selling off right and uh, with oil selling off you had uh, pretty much uh, the, the CAD uh, weaken now I do actually like the uh, this area here the top end of this area the 1.3 1 150 to the 1322 two area as a decent uh, short trade I think that's nice technically um, uh, when we look at where we are though uh, again not really a currency paid I'm looking to trade simply because they're both doing okay but my bias if I was looking to buy one or the other at the moment it looks like the dollar probably will uh, continue to strengthen on pullbacks just look for pullbacks into that area there or if you get one into the one two sevens I think that's going to be decent for a potential buy trade uh, New Zealand dollar US dollar and um, um, yeah we've had uh, prices nearly come up into that supply zone didn't quite come up into that supply zone there but it created uh, a new supply zone which is here and um, with uh, there being more, I guess, more risk off than risk on, um, you would expect the dollar, US dollar, to, to strengthen. Um, the New Zealand dollar actually did um, high crates uh, this this um, uh, this week or the or, or the past week, and I do think that there is a, a, a I guess an opportunity to look to buy the New Zealand dollar in and around these lows. Um, personally, I'm I'm not going to buy it, but I can see why you would want to buy this if prices do come down to the lows, and I think that there could be a potential reversal around those one sixties. Um, so one sixties, the sixty cent area, um, uh, as as we enter into, I guess what was known as an auction. Again, this was a bargain price for the um, uh, for that exchange rate uh, for the New Zealand dollar, and this was you know seen as expensive. And um, I do think that this could be seen as another bargain price if prices do come down here. It also depends on, again, just uh, uh, China um, as well, uh, global growth fears, as well as, um, you know, the economy really kind of getting itself back on track in terms of the global economy. So um, I think that's a decent, that's a very decent risk reward trade if prices can come down to these uh, 61 or 60 cent areas and a potential buyer for the New Zealand dollar, but I'm going to stay out of that trade. Uh, but what I'm not staying out of is the uh, pound dollar and uh, pound dollar. Uh, we've been talking about this for a while, short trades, um, and short bias on that pound dollar, and it's pretty much played out um, as, um, as expected. Of course, no one knows exactly when it's going to go short, but um, you know the path of these resistance has been you know to the short side and I've been saying pretty much you know that I'm short from around uh, April times so it's just a matter of basically looking for pullbacks and then looking at uh, short trades here so um, uh, we do have some supply zones and in fact this supply zone is quite a wide one um, so any pullbacks into that zone if you didn't get into this trade is a short from there um, 
interestingly enough, we do have um, the the Bank of England are looking to uh, to high rates. So, um, but there's a lot of um, uh, uh, economic problems that the US is facing. So um, inflation as well uh, was was heading up above the ten percent, and uh, a peak is still to come. So I warning increases in household energy bills between now and next April mean inflation is likely to head um, above the twelve percent from October. But core inflation might have peaked or is close to peaking uh, now that goods price pressures are easing. We expect another fifty basis points hike from the Bank of England. Um, um, in, um, sorry, Bank of England in September. So as inflation goes higher and higher, um, in the UK we're facing what's known as a cost of living crisis. And so as things are getting more and more expensive, um, there's less money in people's pockets to really, you know, spend on um, things um, in terms of uh, just uh, retail, right? And going shopping and supporting the economy as we are a retail driven um, economy. So cost of living is uh, is really hurting um, the economy and um, potentially we may enter into a uh, deeper recession than other um, other economies and this was a um, HSBC report uh, that uh, from the 10th of August which um, uh, the guys in the group would have um, had access to and um, and so basically from then we knew that we well not from then but we knew that we wanted to continue our bias uh, short as you know HSBC as many as, as well as many other banks were talking about um, the Bank of England hiking rates but the pound weakness is not over yet right so this was from the 10th of August right we go back to the 10th of August somewhere around here right where we were looking at, you know, still shorting the uh, the pounds, right? And so, you know, what you've seen is, uh, one second, where is that? Um, where is that report? Here we go. Um, you know, the bias was still to look for uh, short trades, and you have, you know, the bank, uh, HSBC, yeah, who are not trying to fool you because their, you know, clientele, um, you know, are, um, you know paid subscribers right and so they're not trying to be wrong all the time to mislead their uh, their subscribers right and their their clientele so um so the bank of england hiked its policy rate by 50 basis points uh, with one dovish dissent uh, the bank of england forecasts a deep recession starting from fourth quarter 2022 and further bank of england hikes unlikely to prove beneficial for the pound in our view and we expect the pound to weaken against the dollar over the short to medium term and that's um, pretty much was you know um, confirming my view on the uh, on the uh, on the pound so with uh, with that being said um, as well as I think there was some another uh, bank that was talking about um, the uh, the um, shorting of the uh, pound one second let me just find it right so this was from again MUFG um, who were pretty much this is the latest report I think on the 19th of August and uh, they were basically saying that their downside risk to second half um, of the year pound forecast with the potential for a sense of crisis spreading to FX and it says that we're, they were close to hitting their end of uh, quarter three pound dollar forecast of 117.90 and they certainly expect levels below that in the near term we also expect look the the low from july um of 117.60 to break so covid lows just below 115 would be the next in sight leverage funds recently doubled their long positions uh, of pound and look to be long and wrong those positions are probably being cut now in the move lower so again understanding that you know um where we are from a from a you know a high time frame perspective I'm not saying that you know you have to get you know short today because you if, if anything you're buying you know you're you're selling at lows which is something that you definitely don't want to do so if you're not in this trade looking for a pullback into a zone is going to be really the um uh, the best course of action if you're not in this trade and again this is not trading advice this is not a trade signal or anything like that it's just if you agree um then um you know then you can you know look take take the uh 
take the trade as, as you want I'm just showing you what pretty much uh, I'm doing and um, if you really want to get like a lot of in-depth um, fundamental analysis um, I know a lot of people have been asking me about um, my fundamental analysis spreadsheet um, I've, been, I've been getting some emails about the fundamental analysis spreadsheet and um, and so this is part of really and access to this is part of um, the mentoring group which is opening in fact on the uh, 5th of September and it will be open only until I think maybe the 10th or the 11th of September I'm only going to have um, a short enrollment um, duration so if you are looking to access um, you know, not only in uh, supply and demand, but capture pain relief, stop hunting, um, and un really understand in-depth fundamental and risk sentiment analysis, and understand not only the um, uh, the fundamental analysis spreadsheet and understanding you know strength divergences, convergences, but also as well the currency value cycle, because there are currencies that are ranked you know one to eight. One typically meaning that the currency is, um, you know, would appreciate one, twos and threes or the stronger currencies typically and six, sevens and eights are typically the would be the weaker currencies. But you also have to identify and understand that um, uh, currencies move in cycles. So there are going to be times where a number one a currency that's ranked number one, two or three on the um on the spreadsheet may actually be a one, two or three that may be looking to devalue. And in fact, currency that is ranked six, seven or eight, yeah, and, and has been devaluing, there's gonna be a point where in fact, that's gonna look very you know, cheap and a bargain, six, seven and eight. And uh, an example of that would, was, for example, the pound. The pound was ranked uh, number one and is now number three. And I've been saying for a while that obviously um, my bias is to short the um, the pound, and you've basically seen this. And another one, another example of currency revaluation is, for example, the Swiss franc, right? So since the Swiss franc started, and the Swiss National Bank started to high crates, um, uh, it was ranked number seven, I think it was on the spreadsheet. I think it might be number six now. Um, that for me was actually they were on the revaluation end so it's not just you know um, good enough to just look at you know the, the the raw data and say all right then well you know i should be buying one and selling eight um you really there are things going on beyond the raw data um because if with fundamentals we're looking at future value as well you've got to look at monetary policy what the um you know risks things like risk sentiment in order to understand current and future value Right, and why is a currency likely to continue to strengthen, and or why is it likely to can maybe devalue? And why a currency that is you know devaluing, why why it may want to start to revalue? And so, um, if you do want to get in depth fundamental analysis, mentoring, and trading mentoring, then um, enrollment opens on the fifth of September. So that's trading one eighty dot. Now, uh, getting back to uh, the charts. So for me, the um, the dollar is still a buy against the pound, um, backed up by obviously bank and um, uh, bank analysis as well. So me, for me, just waiting for you know any type of pullback to get back involved in this trade. Um, moving on to the euro dollar, euro dollar. Um, um, very interesting trade this and uh, again similar thing with regards to the pound and really again currencies are about understanding um, you know which which currency is the worst or which currency is the best right because it's basically a straight fight uh, when it comes to understanding um, uh, currency appreciation or devaluation and again I've been saying this for uh, very long time in fact um, I've been short on the euro dollar my bias has been short on the euro dollar for for 18 months I actually uh, created a YouTube video one second let me see if I can find it here it is right shorting the euro dollar for 18 months it was a recent video I did um, with um, um, the guys in the discord room and uh, we were discussing pretty much my thoughts and uh, showing you evidence as to why I was short the euro dollar for you know my bias was short euro dollar for 18 months and this is where the money was made right thousands of pips have been made potentially could have been made obviously holding those trades I didn't hold every single trade it's not necessary to but if you have a bias 
yeah it's literally makes trading a whole lot easier because you understand that all you're buying is you know on pullbacks right are you going to make you know is every single trade going to work out absolutely not but when it does work out that and you understand the power of uh, fundamental analysis and risk sentiment analysis you can get some very very good trades on pullbacks just being patient and so uh, you know prove to you know you and everybody it's all documented in you know a discord group as to why you know i was short from last year the beginning of last year the beginning of 2021 so i go through all of that um in this video on my channel and so um similar thing again just looking at uh understanding uh why you would want to get short on the uh on the euro because it's in a you know worse situation than i think than the us and so um europe uh, the eurozone economy grew less than estimated in the second quarter. Gross domestic product rose 0.6% with initial reading of 0.7%. Economists say recession is now more likely than not. And so, um, yeah, there's uh, just signs. I guess everyone's kind of heading into a recession, but more so Europe are, are more affected. And this is really because of... Um, they've got a lot more problems right so european gas surges as heat and drying rivers drive demand so the rhine river uh, at germany waypoint fell to new lower monday any spike in gas consumption could further tighten the market and why is that really important and it's because um germany which is um uh, europe's you know uh, main economy is heavily reliant on the river to transport coal to its power stations particularly now that the nation is placing more emphasis on fossil fuels due to cuts in gas flows from russia inspired energy uh, said in an email note um so so pretty much um this is also exacerbating um you know uh, energy prices in europe just like in in the uk where we've got the cost of cost of living crisis and energy prices are skyrocketing and projected to skyrocket like you know over the coming um uh, uh, during the winter uh, europe is in a in a in a very you know bad situation um as well right so again if you if you're looking at who's better placed a lot of people will focus so much on you know the u.s and the collapse of the u.s dollar not really understanding that there are countries that are in you know worse situations than uh, than than the u.s and that is reflected right in price that's pretty much reflected in that and if you don't understand this then you're just looking at the technicals um you're always going to be you know on the back foot and you're not going to understand these things um and you're forever going to be in that loop of just um um, of just you know bouncing from strategy to strategy and, and whatever it is right but the point is is that if you understand fundamental and risk sentiment analysis if you understand what you're doing this is a no-brainer it's, it's actually quite obvious what the way the path for these resistance actually is you know over the medium you know to long term anyways we're down into a, an interesting zone um again do you want to be a buyer here of the euro um personally not me even if it does reverse here i'd rather wait for uh, pullbacks especially up to the top the 103s to get involved in here now what would make the euro a buy in the short term is if um, russian gas um, isn't um, switched off right if the russians you know agree that or decide that you know they don't want to cut uh, the, their gas supply you know fully or totally um, and then that would affect obviously um, the European, you know, Eurozone economy in terms of it will give it a boost and then you could see uh, Europe or the Euro start to, um, you know, come up to maybe these 104s, even up, up to these 107 areas. But while the rumour is that, you know, Russia um, still may turn off the uh, gas pipeline, um, again, the path of least resistance for me is just pullbacks to supply zones. Um, Aussie dollar, um, Aussie dollar's pullback um this week again not really a pair that i am interested in but if you are looking to buy the australian dollar then um i actually think that this level here is is actually quite decent but more more from a stop hunting perspective not really a, a demand zone but um from a demand zone perspective i think this area here the 0 0.67 is is actually quite decent technically and for other fundamental reasons i think that actually might be a decent um buy i was talking about it. i mentioned in this with the guys in the group if i'm you know buying a commodity currency against against uh, the um against the dollar it would be the uh, the australian dollar so decent 
um, if you're looking at technically down at these lows, if you're looking at you know buying the US dollar, then a pull back into uh, these areas here, uh, a decent shorting opportunities. Um, looking at the Australian dollar, uh, yen, and I'm a I'm long on this. The prices did come down to a decent zone, didn't quite touch this uh, demand zone, so I'm going to keep this demand zone here for now. Uh, for me, the really a really good trade is going to be if prices can pull back down into this 9150 areas i do like that for a uh, for a long trade and a buy trade um again just be careful of a uh, risk sentiment but i do think overall that the australian dollar should want to strengthen in the um in the going into the third and the fourth quarters providing that china doesn't you know enter into in, into some sort of a recession or anything like that as China is uh, Australia's biggest trade partner and if China starts to shrink in, in terms of GDP or they don't get themselves, you know, they have another outbreak of um, of coronavirus, etc., then that's going to affect the Australian dollar trade which and the economy, which then would mean that the Australian dollar is probably likely to um, uh, to uh, to devalue. Um, looking at gold, finally gold and gold, obviously with the dollar strengthening, um, uh, gold is obviously pulling back now I do think that gold obviously in the long term is still a buy um, and the dollar will be a sell at some point right I'm, I'm definitely um, considering uh, selling the dollar um, you know at some point not anytime soon um, but it, there are certain triggers uh, that I'm looking for um, to actually sell the dollar so um, you know, basically, this is more of a, a long term play and accumulation play in terms of uh, buying uh, gold against the dollar. And uh, I do think that if prices do pull back to here um, and just below here, then um, I think that you know, the 116.60s, I do think that that's going to be a very nice uh, buying opportunity. It's been you know, proven that central banks are increasing their gold buys. So uh, for them, as prices start to come down, this represents a nice buying opportunity to buy gold if they believe that in the next maybe 12 to 18 months, um, you know, prices should be somewhere up here or up here. So uh, they're not in a rush to buy, you know, they're not in a rush to buy. Um, they'll buy when, you know, as they need uh, to buy and, you know, the market makers will provide the liquidity for them to buy. And that takes time, right? That can take weeks and even, you know, months for, you know, bank, um, for investment banks and central banks to, uh, to really, you know, buy, um, uh, and to enter into you know certain positions and uh, scale in and scale out of positions anyways guys for me um again long term buying gold any you know i think this is definitely a bargain price um and just below that would be even an even better price if you are looking for uh, short trades then uh, you're looking at a pull back into that zone but that would represent um you know going long on on, on the dollar really um, so that's where we are anyways guys that's it for this week hope you enjoyed the in-depth analysis and uh, take care and i'll speak to you all soon